Well, you guys got another video on how to turn a MIDI PC into a NAS, which is your network attached storage. So we have a U59, which is a mini PC from B-Link. It's a pretty budget PC, as you can see here. It's got a Celeron N5105 processor, only eight gigabytes of RAM in this, and storage is 512 gigabytes. Now on this one, we do have two USB ports on the front and a Type-C port on the front as well, and that power button there. Bit of ventilation on the side here, and on the back, this is where all the meat and potatoes are, which is what we're gonna be using here, which is the two Ethernet ports on here. We're only gonna be using one, but we've got HDMI here and two more USB ports, which you could use for more storage if you wanted to plug something into those. We've got our power input here. This unit comes with its power brick and everything else. So you've got everything you'll need here for around about 200 pounds. You can get yourself a mini PC like this, which you can use for a network attached storage. Now these budget mini PCs do have room for another SSD in here. So if you don't want to add any sort of external drives to this right away, you could simply put in a two terabyte SSD in here, which is what I'm going to do. And you could also get one with 16 gigs which is actually 200 pounds for that model. I'll show you a little bit later on in the video. So we've got a gig stick here, but really you want to try and populate both of these. And uh, I'll show you that a little bit later on on Amazon, which you can purchase. Now you can use any model of mini PC that you like, but we don't need anything too powerful for what we're going to be doing here. This does have a 512 gigabyte uh, drive in here as well, which we could install Open Media Vault onto this if we wanted to. I'm going to put in this two terabyte in here as well for a bit of extra storage and I'll show you what you can use as well if you want to add even more storage to make it more like a uh, network attached storage with loads of storage available to you. But you don't get any other options available apart from this here. So let's go ahead and we'll get this populated here. That little mark on the bottom there is just from the thermal pad and that's all that is there. It's not water. It's actual grease from the thermal pad. But let me go ahead and populate this area here. It just needs to be popped in like so and clip it into place. Now, some of these do have their own little attached cable that you have to attach to them. But this one just literally pops in like so. So now I've got this little small 128 gigabyte uh, USB drive here. Now, you can run Open Media Vault from a USB drive if you wanted to, and that would give me two lots of storage inside here, and that'll be okay if you don't want to add any more external storage right away. Now, the unit itself is this one right here. You can see this is the upgraded model, and this is the B Link U59 Pro, and you can get this for roughly £200 or thereabouts, a little bit more, £209. But if you use the coupon code £60 off there, you will be able to get this on Amazon. And you can see we do have that gigabit ethernet port now if you want to add more external drives to it you could use something like this this is from terramaster this is the d6320 and it's a pretty powerful little unit it's got six storage bays in here which means you can have plenty of storage available to you it does connect via usb 3.2 gen 2 10 gbps a type c connector on here they are op swappable and this will give you plenty of storage for your NAS. The mini PC is plenty powerful. And as I said before, if you want something that's got a lot of storage capacity, something like this will be able to plug straight into that mini PC and uh, Open Media Vault should be able to see those drives and you can then share data on them. And it's going to be very useful. Now you could use other software like uh, Unraid and things like that if you want to. Let me know if you want to see any videos on that sort of stuff in the comments section below, I'd be happy to make those videos for you. I'm just going to be plugging in all of the keyboard and mouse and everything else into here. Next thing we know what we need to do is download Open Media Vault. So on the page here, you'll see that Open Media Vault is the next generation network attached storage solution based on Debian, which is going to be very useful for a lot of people that don't want to go out and splash out a ton of money on a, a natural NAS itself, you can build your own. Now, of course, you don't have to have that external uh, solution there. If you don't want to, you could just use the built-in uh, solution. But again, you are gonna be limited for 
the amount of uh, data that you'll be able to store on there, i.e. So we've put a two terabyte drive in there, which is only going to be two terabytes of storage, which we can share across the home network. So if you do want more storage, then look at other solutions available to you where you can share that data across your home network with everyone in your home. So depending on how much storage you need will determine what you need to buy. So have a good look around. There's plenty of other options available other than the one I just showed you. I was just showing you that one because a lot of people always ask about building your own NAS. So this is how you can do it. So basically, we got this downloaded now. We're going to need Etcher and we can download this to create a bootable USB flash drive. So you will need another drive to boot to. And again, you don't have to install this onto a USB drive. You can install it onto the uh, actual SSD inside uh, the actual drive, not your storage one, but the NVMe SSD one. So let's go ahead and uh, do this here. I'm going to agree to this and get this installed so we can build a bootable USB flash drive. So we're going to have to find the flash file. So let's go ahead and click on this one here. And uh, we're going to find our file that we just downloaded, which is our Open Media Vault. So let's go ahead and click on it. And uh, this will open up another window. Just navigate to the place where you stored your ISO. For instance, mine's in Downloads, and this is the one we're going to be using. Now we need to select a target. So I'm going to select our USB drive here, as you can see. So let me just select this, and we can then click on Select One. Now the show hidden bit here is to hide the operating system file. So be careful not to check mark any of these because it will erase all of the data on those drives and you don't want to be doing any of that. So let's go ahead and just select the one that we want to use. So select one and we can now flash and this is going to erase all of the data on that drive and it's going to basically install Open Media Vault onto a bootable USB flash drive, which is what we're creating here. So once we've done this, we can actually boot to this uh, with our mini PC. So I'm just going to let this finish off here and it will validate to make sure the flash has gone correctly. And there we go. It doesn't take too long. But once that's done, we'll head back to the actual system here. So what I'm going to do here is now boot to this. And uh, I will show you here. I've got the USB flash drive here. I'm going to plug this in. You can already see I've got the small little USB flash drive in here, which is where the operating system will be uh, installed to. And that will come clear a little bit later on. Turn it around the other way, bright. There we go. And it's in. And all we need to do now is add a bit of power to it. And we can power this on. I've already got my mouse and keyboard on a little tiny dongle plugged in here. And we can then power this on once we get some power to it. So let's go ahead and boot this up. Once we're booting up here, we need to get into the BIOS here. You can either tap the delete key or F2 or whatever it is on your little mini PC. And once we're there, we'll be able to boot to the uh, menu. So you can either boot to the uh, boot menu or you can boot straight into the BIOS and change it in there, depending on how you want to uh, change your boot order. This is the boot order here, right here. So I can now select the USB flash drive to boot from. So let's go down to this one right here, UEFI USB, push this one. And this will then give us this screen here, which is Open Media Vault. It will say install. So let's go ahead and click enter on the keyboard. Now we need to choose our language. So I'm going to choose English and I need to choose the next one, which is United Kingdom. This is for our location. So push enter. And now we need to configure the keyboard. So I'm going to choose British English here and select that by pushing enter. Now, if you see a bit of flashing on the screen, that's OK. That's normal. It's just detecting stuff on the network. It's now wanting to configure the network here and it wants us to choose our primary network interface. So I'm going to go ahead and select the Realtek up the very top here because I don't want to use the Intel uh, wireless uh, card for my interface. So let's go ahead and choose this one here and it's then going to detect some other stuff. Let it prepare and link all this stuff up and get it configured because we're just configuring our network here and it will take a bit of time and it's configuring a network with DHCP. And now we give it a host name. I'm going to leave that as default called Open Media Vault. But if you want to give it a different name, you can do. So I'll leave that as is and push enter. Now the domain name is local. I'm going to leave that as local, but you can call that whatever you want. Just remember that you will have to remember what these are when you set them up. 
Now we need to set up the root password for our device. So I'm going to go ahead and put my root password in here. Make sure it's a pretty strong password because this is on the network. So let's go ahead and give this a password here. So I'm just going to give this a reasonably uh, decent password because this will gain access to your device. So I'm going to push enter here. It's going to ask us to do this twice. So let's go ahead and re-enter this one back in. So once we've entered this, we can push enter and then move on to the next step, which will be detecting our drives. So I'm going to let that do its thing. You might see the blue screen hanging for a little while. That's OK. So partition disks here. So please ensure you select the correct device uh, for the operating system. This is to install the operating system. OK, so we need to select the right drive for our operating system. So you can see these are the drives that is detected. So the first one is our uh, SATA NVMe drive. And then we've got our two terabyte SSD on there as well. And below that, we have our 123 uh, 0.1 gigabyte SanDisk drive. That's where our uh, operating system is going to be installed on on here. And then we've got our 30.8 gigabyte drive here, which is what the Open Media Vault uh, was created on to boot to. So let's go ahead and select the drive that you want to do here. So if you want to use the uh, SATA drive here for the NVMe, you can do whatever you want to install yours onto. Choose the right drive for yourself. So once that's done, it's going to say write the changes to the disk. Just use your cursor arrow keys on the keyboard to select yes. And then we can push enter to select that option. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that right now. As you can see, it's gone red now. Push enter. And now what we're doing here is it's just going to get all the partitions formatted and get them ready for us. It's creating the ext4 uh, file system. So let that go ahead and do its thing. And it's now installing the system onto that little drive that we created there. Or whatever drive you selected, it's going to install Open Media Vault onto there. And once it's done, you can remove your bootable uh, drive, which had the old Open Media Vault on it to create it. So let's go ahead and uh, let this finish off. So we'll speed this part up here until we get to the next stage, which is this one here. So this is configure the package manager. So I'm going to use United Kingdom here. You can choose whatever country you're in. And now we can configure the package manager by choosing where we want to download it from. So we're going to download it from, say, deb.debian.org. Uh, you can choose whatever one you want. Uh, so I'm going to choose that one. Uh, we don't need a proxy, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on Enter to continue. And this will configure everything for us. And then once that's done, we should be near the end. And we'll just let this finish off here. And then you should say Installation Complete here. And it will ask you to remove your installation media. Now, this is not the operating system you're removing. This is the actual bootable media that you created with Etcher. So you can remove that USB flash drive now and we should be OK. It should tell you right here, make sure you remove the installation media so you can boot to the actual new operating system rather than restarting straight to the uh, installation media again. So let's go ahead and remove this right now before we push continue. And then we will boot up for the very first time. So once you've booted up, you're going to need to make sure that you go into your BIOS and change the boot order to make sure it's booting to the correct drive, especially if you're using the USB flash drive. So I've already got mine selected to uh, hard disk uh, Debian here. That's the one we're going to be booting to. And we're going to make sure we're booting to the fixed priority for that one there. And there's another one here in boot option. I've changed that to Debian as well. So to boot to that device. So once we've done that, we can now shut the system down properly and we can then remove the keyboard and everything else because we don't need it. So all I've got in here now is my operating system and obviously the Ethernet cable into the mini PC and that's it. We don't need to have anything else in there because that's going to sit in the corner. Now, if you had something plugged into it like that, for instance, that external drive, then you can plug those in still because obviously you'll need them to actually use them. So at that stage, I'm just using the internal storage rather than having external storage. 
So now we need to log in here. That's admin and open media vault as password. And this will allow us to log in. You should see something looking like this on the computer now. We're actually on another computer on the local network. And this is the place where you can start to configure uh, your device by going into here and into the dashboard here, and you can set it up the way you want. So let's go ahead and add some uh, widgets here. So I'm going to go ahead and do CPU utilization. You can add whatever you like in here. You don't have to copy me and what I'm putting in here. I'm just showing you exactly what you can do on yours. So let's go ahead and we've got uptime here, file system, CPU utilization, smart, and a bunch of other stuff here. You can check them all if you want to. It's entirely up to you. You can get access to this a little bit later on as well if you want to. But let's just go ahead and put some check marks in some of this stuff so I can show you exactly what it looks like once we've got these uh, check marked. So I'm going to check mark a bunch of these. Uh, we've got some uptime here, which might be useful as well. So let's go ahead and check mark that. And we can now select uh, the set save settings. And this will save it, and you'll be able to see what it looks like. And uh, let's go ahead and click on the. So once you're happy, go down to save and save it, and you'll see them populate on the screen. There we go. And you can add whatever you like there. OK, so now that's done. What you want to do here is we need to go up to the top where it says there's a little bell up the top there. And you want to make sure that you do all the updates on this device. So go up to the top and you should see a little bell and this will run all the updates updates for our system you can see it's a big long list of them here so all we need to do here is install all of these updates and we can confirm and say yes and this will download and upgrade all the packages here so you can see a bunch of green text going up on the screen don't worry about that that's pretty normal just let that go ahead and do its updates it might take a bit of time and once it's done uh, it will tell you it's finished okay so up on the top right hand side you should see that little user account icon here we can change our password right here which you should do. And we've also got our dark mode and other stuff up there as well. And we've also got our power button. This is where you can log out and reboot, standby and shut down up there. So if you need to reboot, shut down, standby on your little mini PC, that's what you should do. Don't just push the power button because you will break it. Okay, so let's go to our storage and configure our storage for this uh, actual device here. So click on storage. And if you click on disks, this is where you get access to disks, smart, system, uh, software RAID and file systems and shared folders. This is where we're going to configure everything. So inside here, these are your disks that you've got. Under file system, we can now configure our file system. So we're going to go ahead and click on the plus and do ext4 and then select the drive that you want to set it up on. We're going to be doing it on that two terabyte drive. And you'll see creating file system and you'll see a little prompt box popping up with a load of green text. Let that finish its thing. It does take a bit of time. So it's just writing all the tables here and stuff like that. And once that's done, it should tell you it should say end of line. And that means we've now completed our file system on that drive. So now we can go to this little line here where it says select file system, select it. And then we can select the one we just created. All we need to do now is click on save and you'll see pending configuration changes. So select the little tick and click yes, and it will then save that configuration that we've just told it to do. So once that's done, it will be completed. And we've now completed the file system for that drive and we've selected that drive. Now you can see it's online and it's mounted and everything's working uh, fine. So what we need to do here now is we're going to go to shared folders because we need to create a shared folder. So let's click on the create and then click on this one here, the name. And uh, what we want to do is give it a name. So call it whatever you like. I'm going to call this one photos and you can call yours whatever you like here. Select the drive that we've just created here and done the file system on. And now you can see it's all listed here. We can give it some permissions. I'm going to give it everyone uh, read and write permissions. And we've now done that. So we can now click on save and it will give us that pending box once more. And we need to save uh, that actual configuration that we've just done here. So let's go ahead and click on the tick again and click yes. And that is now completed. So that's now all ready for sharing. So what we need to do now is we're going to go to where it says services 
and we're going to go over to this one here, SMB. And SMB, we need to get to settings here and we need to configure it because we need to make sure that it's uh, visible. So let's go ahead and click on the enable feature. There's a bunch of other features in here you can have a look at a little bit later on. But all we need to do here is go to where it says enable workgroup and we're going to enable this one and we're going to click on save once more. So let's go back down and click on save. And that's now saved. Again, you're going to get that pending coming up here and click on the tick to apply these uh, changes and say yes. And this will configure our SMB or our CIFS, which is our common uh, internet file system. So let's go ahead and select that. Now what we can do is go down to where it says shares and or we can go over to the SMB again and click shares that way. Now from here, we need to create a share. So let's go ahead and click on the little blue cross and right where it says right here, click on this and select the folder that we created called photos. And what we're going to do is we're going to go here and come down to the bottom there. There's a load of other settings here. I'm not going to go into those in this video. And we've now selected that one. And once again, we have to uh, use the pending configuration changes and apply those uh, to our settings. So let's go ahead and do that right here. It does take a bit of time, so be patient. And I can see here public no, so I've not set this up right. So let me go back in uh, to this right here because there's a setting I've probably missed. Click edit. And what we're going to do is go right here and put guests only uh, for public. So we can see that on the public. And there we go. That's now done. So we should be set up now. And uh, this will be for everyone on our local network. So let me go ahead and change these changes by applying these. And uh, once that's done, we should be now able to share files on our network. And you can use this method on other storage devices that you have on your network. Again, you would just go into storage, like I showed you earlier, and select the drive that you want to create uh, with the drives that you have, and then just go through that same process, and you'll be able to share those. Now, there is some plugins here as well. Now, I will say that you will have a few issues with the USB flash drive unless you install a couple of plugins. One of them is OMV Extras, and also the other one is uh, Flash Memory. And these are two plugins that are essential for having it boot on a USB flash drive and working off of the USB flash drive. I had a few issues with it, and I went and installed it onto the NVMe drive just for simplicity and get it to work properly. So bear that in mind if you are wanting to boot it off of a USB flash drive, you can do but there's a few more steps that you have to do, which I'll probably cover in another video. So let's go ahead and go to control panel on our main system here. And what we're gonna do is go to our networking section here, and we're just going to go over to where it says uh, the advanced sharing. So I wanna make sure that all this, this is turned on because otherwise you're not gonna be able to see the files that you're, the folder that you're sharing on the network. So as you can see on here, I've got network discovery is on and I'm also uh, sharing everything here. As you can see, network discovery is on these. Uh, this is all networks. I ain't got to worry about this so much. It's just the main uh, private one and public one up the top there. So once we've got that done, uh, we can close that off. And now we can go to this PC and we can now go over to the three dots and click on this and add our map network drive. And from here, you can choose whatever drive letter you like. There's plenty of them to choose from. Just make sure you choose one that you're not using. I'll leave this on Z and we're just going to hit browse. And basically that will detect. And we're just letting that populate. It should be Open Media Vault that it finds. And there we go. We can now click on this one here and it should show us the folder that we've created. In my case, it's photos. I'm going to click uh, OK here and everything is OK here. So we can now click on finish. And what this is going to do is give us our network drive here. There it is. It's empty because we've got no data in there. So we can copy over some data to this and share it across the network if you want to. So let's go ahead and just drag one of these uh, files over here into there so you can see that it is actually going onto our two terabyte SSD onto that device. Now, of course, if you've got other storage devices on that device, it will uh, be able to share those on all of those uh, drives. And there we go, it's now on our two terabyte drive on our storage device on our little mini PC. And I can click on this and it will play perfectly fine as you can see right here. 
So there you go. That's pretty much it. So a basic rundown on how to set up uh, Open Media Vault on a mini PC. Pretty straightforward stuff. If you want to set up other things like uh, TrueNAS and other ones, let me know in the comments section below. I'll be happy to make those videos for you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.